afternoon, everybody. Um, actually, we're still got some people trying to join in here for just a second, but uh, good afternoon. My name is Alex Beamer. I'm director of band and orchestra with West Music Company. Uh, we are excitingly and very happy to have uh, James Gast uh, with us today um, from Caden uh, Technical Industries uh, featuring uh, Audio Technica. Um, so, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of different stuff today. Microphones, going to hear some things. Uh, I'm very excited for uh, the afternoon's uh, presentation. So just a heads up, we are recording. And uh, so we'll be able to get the copy of the, the recording out to everyone after we're done. Uh, and if you have questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. And then if you've got anything later on, when we get further along and uh, you want to just un unmute and uh, ask James a direct question, that's completely fine. So um, without further ado, James, take it away, my man. Hello, I'm James. Hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I am uh, the representative for Audio Technica in the Midwest. So Missouri, Iowa, uh, Nebraska, Illinois. Um, and uh, anyway, I'm here today uh, uh, to talk about microphones with you. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a graduate of the Los Angeles Recording Work Workshop, which is in LA. Um, and uh, got my degree in engineering, audio and video post-production engineering. And been uh, selling audio uh, ever since, so since the 90s. So uh, long history with uh, running sound, doing live shows, recording production, and in installation as well. Uh, so now I sell the stuff that I used to use. So without any further ado, we're, we're going to work, we're gonna go through a PowerPoint. I'm going to kind of explain uh, basically the in and out of uh, microphones. Uh, we're going to talk about all kinds of different types of microphones, why one works better than another for different situations. And feel free to chime in anytime you want, ask me a question, and uh, hopefully I can answer it. So without any further ado, uh, let me uh, share my screen here. I uh, should say Audio Technica microphones, hopefully. So. You're good okay. to go. Okay, good. <laughs> um, so what is a microphone? A uh, microphone is a, a number of different, uh, it can be a number of different things. Uh, they can look lots, lots of different ways. They can look uh, big and they can look small. They can look, uh, you know, like the one I'm talking into today, a mic like this one, it's a side address mic. It can be uh, a stick mic uh, that you're used to seeing, you know, just a regular vocal mic. What they do, uh, they pick up the sound and uh, put it through speakers or through a computer or a number of different things. The first thing we're gonna talk about is uh, polar patterns. So there's different types of mics. So why are there so many different types of mics? One big difference is that there's different polar patterns, which means they pick up different ways. So some microphones pick up uh, in an omnidirectional, which means an all around. So if I'm looking at a microphone, right, it's picking up all the way around it. Uh, all equally. That uh, it's uh, it it works good on miking a room, um, or someone who's not real close to the microphone. Uh, if you have a group, you know, like a bluegrass group, let's say, and you got uh, three or four singers, and they're all crowded around a microphone, uh, an omni mic might work really well for that situation because it's picking up equally. Uh, those, uh, like I said, are generally though or better for picking up uh, large areas. Uh, next, we have the polar, polar pattern. And the polar pattern, just like I told you, is a circle. So ev evenly round. Next, we get into what we call unidirectional cardioid, supercardioid, and hypercardioid. Now, these types of microphones are the most common. And the main reason why they are the most common is they basically pick up directly what's in front of them. They try to reject sound from the side. Therefore, they don't, they, they don't do uh, feedback as much. So if you guys are uh, familiar with feedback sounds like, it can be squeals, it can be make all kinds of different sounds, uh, sometimes really loud. Uh, so a microphone that's picking up directly just what's in front of it has uh, less chance of picking up stuff from other areas. That's why a lot of times you'll notice with a standard uh, microphone like you see here, you'll see them on stage facing the person. 
and then you'll see a little monitor on the floor facing back up. That way it's being rejected. So it's not picking up the side. To look a little closer, uh, <clears throat> this is what the polar pattern is. So if you, if you can think about this, if you can see my little red pointer here, if that's the tip of the microphone, it's picking up around it like that, but it's rejecting the side to side and the back. The next type is a super cardioid. Now it's very similar to a cardioid, except now it's going to block out even more. It, therefore, it's going to pick up more in a straight line. So if you look at this, you'll notice it's picking up more of this way, but less over here. And it just, it increases the rear just a hair. So that's a super cardioid. So it's gonna be a, a little bit, it's gonna reject sound even more. And then we have hypercardioid. This is the maximum side rejection. So if you look at this, now we have the maximum uh, you can see there. So it's really, it's really more of a straight line. This is the most common uh, on, uh, for you know, a lot of your louder bands <laughs> uh, or louder uh, performances just because it, it's really directional. Any questions yet? Am I going too fast? Okay. Next, we have uh, um, a bi-directional microphone. Now, these are most commonly found in like a recording studio or in a um, uh, an area, maybe like an orchestra, uh, to mic an orchestra. Can, what this can do is it actually picks up both. It's like having two cardioids put together. So one faces one way and the other one faces the opposite way. This is why they call it a figure eight. It looks like an eight. So in the case of the microphone, like I'm talking into right now, this is a cardioid. But if you imagine, instead of just picking up right in front of me, like I am now, it's picking up in front and at the rear simultaneously. So picking up a room, uh, especially for like an orchestra, it's really good for that because you're picking up uh, both areas uh, pretty equally. Uh, let's see what else do I have here that's uh, okay. So, so those are the different polar patterns available in a microphone. Now, there are other differences now. And now the next differences we're going to talk about are uh, what we call condenser microphones and uh, dynamic microphones. Uh, these are the two main type of mics you, you will find out there. So with a dynamic microphone, uh, it's a standard single coil wire. And with uh, a sound pressure hits what we call the diaphragm. So I'm gonna open this up. It's kind of hard to see, I know, but sound pressure hits that. And that's the diaphragm. And that creates an electro, uh, electromagnetic signal. And that goes through the cable, through the mixer, through your speakers. And next thing you know, you have sound. So in order for this type of microphone to work though, you have to be pretty close to it. And that's because it's requiring that sound pressure to work. Does that make sense to everyone? So, if you look at the coil, what's happening here is you have the sound pressure hitting and it's simulating that coil and that was, that's what goes out. And with these type of microphones, they tend to be the most reliable, the most rugged. You can drop them. Um, they're good in uh, heat and cold and high humidity. Uh, and they, since they are dynamic, um, they can hold a lot of sound pressure. So not only for singing, but for loud sound like a guitar or uh, a drum set. Uh, things that are really loud have a harder time distorting one of these types of mics. And with Audio-Technica, we sell lots of different types of dynamic mics. If you notice, all these different microphones, they have different looks to each one. That's not just coincidence. There's a reason for all that. So. These lower these these microphones here are more of your standard typical type microphone, very similar to what I have here. 
as you look up here, remember uh, we were just talking about polar patterns. This one here is a hypercardioid. So these are two cardioid dynamics. This is a hypercardioid dynamic. A little bit different looking windscreen, right? Now this is an instrument dynamic mic. If you notice, it's a flat screen on the top. That's why it, that's so you can close mic a guitar amp or a close mic a drum set or a drum. This is very similar, except no, if you notice, this is much larger than this, right? Well, this is also an instrument microphone, but it has a larger diaphragm. And with that larger diaphragm, what that does is allows more bass frequencies to be picked up. So therefore, this microphone is a good choice for things like bass drums or uh, a bass guitar. This microphone is more, they make, this is more like a specialty type mic. If you notice, it's in a right angle. This is made primarily for uh, uh, drums. If you notice, it just uh, sticks right over there and gets right on top of the drum itself. So that's more of a specialty mic. Really not much difference than this one here, except in the look and the, oh, I guess the uh, 90 degree angle there. And then finally, these are just higher end versions of back of these. So as they get better, they just get, uh, they put a little bit more time and effort into the microphones, they sound a little bit better. So dynamic microphones are the most common and you'll find them in all shapes and sizes and they do hold up very well in any, just about any element. Next, we're gonna talk about condenser microphones. So a condenser mm -hmm. mic, is similar to a dynamic mic because it does pick up sound pressure, but there's actually uh, electricity where um, a dynamic mic requires sound pressure to work and does not require electricity. It literally, you plug it in, it, it's, it's already working. A condenser microphone requires electricity. And what that allows it to do is to, to not rely on the sound pressure. Um, and therefore it can be a lot more sensitive. So a condenser type microphone, once again, can also come in very different types of uh, sizes. But the way it works is the sound pressure, the sound waves comes in, hits this little front plate. That front plate is charged by a battery. We sometimes we call it phantom power or 48 volts, if you've ever heard any of those terms. Most mixers have them uh, built in. Anyway, that electricity goes through the microphone cable and charges this element, which gives you your sound. So your sound is much uh, cleaner. Um, it tends to uh, pick up longer distances because it's they're more sensitive. Um, they pick up better high frequency sounds too. So you'll lot, a lot of times you'll find condensers on instruments like cymbals and on uh, violins and cellos, acoustic guitars. Uh, a lot of vocalists use, it, use condensers in the studio. That's very popular in the studio. Where condensers differ though, um, from some of the, like the dynamic is since they are more sensitive, they are, they are also more prone to feedback because they're more sensitive. Remember how feedback works. What feedback is, is the sound that comes out of your speaker comes out of the speaker into the room and the microphone picks up that sound and sends it right back through the speaker. So whatever the loudest frequency is in the room and every room is different, that is the frequency that you hear. So that squeal you hear is actually a frequency. And that frequency just happens to be the loudest frequency in the room at that time. So a condenser microphone being a much more sensitive microphone is more prone to pick those sounds up therefore giving you a little bit more chance of feedback. But if you can control them and you, and you, and they're actually, once you learn it, you, you can control them pretty well. They work really well for live as well. Um, another thing that you'll find with condenser mics are there, there are uh, a lot more polar patterns available. So when I, when we talked about figure eight and we talked about uh, uh, cardioid and omni, a condenser, since it is electrically charged, has the ability, uh, given the right model, to switch between the different ones. Uh, so where a dynamic mic, you're kind of stuck with what it is. A condenser mic can change with a switch. 
in uh, the Audio Technica line, like I said, a lot of different looks to condenser mics. This looks like a handheld dynamic, and it's basically what it is. This is for a live stage, and what they do is they, with Audio Technica, we try to uh, make it uh, is <laughs> as least feedback prone as we can for a condenser. So we take certain frequencies and we increase them. Some frequencies we take out of them just to try to give it as, as best sound as we can without uh, as much feedback. So we have the 210 there. We've got the uh, 3300, the 8300. That is a higher uh, quality condenser mic. Um, still, though, more for a live performance. Then we have our side address models here. The 2020, this is our probably Audio Technica's most popular. That's what I'm talking into right now. So this microphone you see right now is a 2020. Um, it is a cardioid uh, condenser microphone, side address. Uh, this 2050 that you see here now is pretty much very similar to the 2020, except this is multi-pattern now. So this one, the difference there is now I can select cardioid, uh, omni, or uh, uh, hypercardioid. Makes sense? And then we have some what we call pencil. I, I always call them pencil condensers. And a pencil condenser uh, is a smaller uh, condenser microphone that you see here. And that smaller diaphragm picks up, uh, it does better with picking up higher frequencies. So you'll see a, these on hi-hats a lot and cymbals, so things like that. Acoustic guitars, they sound really nice on too. So before we get into the ribbon mics, uh, I'm gonna ask a question. Does any, any, any questions with anyone? Anything I can answer? We're good, good? For a moment there, James. I'm sorry, what? I think we're good in the chat at the moment. Okay, good. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to do a little experiment. I'm going to see if I can, I'm going to, I'm going to unshare my screen if I can figure this out. And the world is Zoom. Okay, so what I want to do is I want, I want you to hear some of the differences between these mics. So I figured we'd do a, a little bit of listening. Okay, so you hear me right now. So as you can tell, like I said, I'm talking into a 2020 condenser mic. Hello, 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 check, two, three. Um, let's hear what the computer speaker, the speaker, the, or the microphone on the computer sounds like. So let's, uh, let me turn that on. Uh, let's see here. Here we go. Check, one, two, three. You hear a difference? You hear that difference? Okay. Yeah, the, the, the little microphone and the computer actually doesn't do a bad job, but it definitely doesn't have the same character. Now I wanna try a dynamic microphone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I, next sitting next to me, it's kind of hard to see, sorry, with this uh, contraption I built here. <laughs> hard to see but if you can see there's this little mixer right there okay and that little mixer is uh, a little mixer from a company called Alan the Heath that I sell and what it is it's just a little USB mixer right plugs into any computer and you can plug a microphone into that so it's a really nice little way of getting sound into the machine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that mixer on and I'm going to take my dynamic mic that I have here this is just a standard regular microphone, and we're going to hear what that sounds like. Two, three, four, can you hear me? Yeah, check. So with a dynamic microphone, if I get really close, you'll hear it gets really bassy, right? As I walk away, check, 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 it gets less bassy but you don't get, you don't hear it as well, right? Check, 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 check. So this works really well, like I said, for live sound or for public address, or, you know, if you're going to have it close, relatively close to you. But if you get it too far away, you lose it. That's why dynamic work, mics work like this. So let's go back to my condenser mic. OK, 
Can you hear me? So now I've got the condenser on. I'm further away too. So where that dynamic mic, I was right in front of my face. I'm about this far away. Kind of hard to see that, but um, so I'm literally probably a foot away from uh, my microphone. So uh, like I said, they're more sensitive. They pick up sound further. Um, and there's a number of different types. Uh, some other mics I did not even put on here. There's in condensers, there's a thing called a shotgun mic. Uh, shotgun mic um, tends to pick up longer distances. If you ever, ever watch anything on like movies or uh, a broadcast or anything like that, you'll see sometimes you'll see these microphones that are really, really long. Um, sometimes they have fuzzy things on them as well. That is called a, a shotgun mic and it's a condenser mic, but uh, like a hypercardioid, we're picking up directly in front. It's picking up directly in front and really, really uh, focused. So you'll see them used, uh, you know, for sports and, uh, you know, all kinds of different uses. But uh, if you have to pick up a long way, that is a really good way of doing it. That's called a shotgun mic. So um, I'm going to go back to sharing the screen and we're going to talk about our next slide. Let me figure out how to do this again. Okay, this is how I do it. <laughs> okay, are you seeing some microphones there? Cool, okay. So next, uh, we're gonna talk about ribbon microphones. Now a ribbon microphone is uh, kind of, it's similar to a dynamic because it requires, it, it does use sound pressure uh, to work. But the difference is, it uses a ribbon, like literally it looks like a ribbon um, or a foil, and it stretches it between two poles, and that ribbon picks up the, the uh, sound pressure or the vibrations, hit that, and stimulate that ribbon, which gives you a certain sound. I forgot I had it here, but let me get up here for a second. This is a ribbon mic. It's kind of hard to see, but this is, if you've ever seen Johnny Carson, this is an RCA 77DX, which was one of the first ribbon microphones you'd ever see. So if you've ever seen, uh, you've seen them a lot in the 40s and the 50s, they have a very unique sound too. Since they are uh, stretched between two ribbons, the sound quality is uh, colored in the sense that it doesn't pick up a lot of the highs. Uh, like the brightness uh, that's like a condenser would pick up and it doesn't pick up quite the same amount of lows so um and since it's a ribbon it's not as sensitive as even a dynamic a standard dynamic mic would be so what you get is an almost a natural compression when you speak into a ribbon microphone so it's a really great sounding type of microphone um but it is unique. It doesn't sound quite like uh, your dynamics or your condensers. Uh, it's, it would, these days with the, the world of digital, the resolution isn't quite as good, but it does have a sound. It's really neat, unique sound, warm sound. So anyway, with AT, we make a couple different types of ribbon microphones. And that's for more, I would say you'd probably find them mostly in recording. Although I did know some guys that did like to use ribbons on stage, but anyway, another type of microphone that's uh, pretty common out there is what we call a boundary microphone. Now, boundary microphone is a small diaphragm condenser mic, so it is a condenser of sorts, but it's uh, mounted uh, in a housing that uh, directs the diaphragm uh, to the surface. So basically, the sound hits the surface and goes into that microphone. So they're, they, we call them PZ, sometimes you might see them called PZMs or uh, sometimes they're flat. They have like a little flat black, uh, little plate that you'll see and it looks like a microphone. So it picks up basically what hits the surface. So as sound hits the surface, it gets directed into it. You see, they're pretty common with uh, recording orchestras as well. I've seen them do that a lot. Some people, I've seen some people try to use them in theater I, I always got too much walking, <laughs> but uh, um, I have seen people try to use them in different situations. So um, 
anyway, it's a very common mic uh, as well. And that's and the little mixer I was just talking to you about. That's the little mixer. So it's a little, and that allows you to plug in. And, and lots of manufacturers make these types of mixers. You know, uh, I, you know, Alan and Heath makes a really nice one here. And it has a USB port. And you just plug in your microphones into it. And it goes from in your mixer into your computer. And out of your computer, right back into the mixer. And you can hear it through speakers. So, um now we're going to talk about USB microphones. So that's kind of what this whole thing was about to get us to this point where we can actually talk a little bit more about USB microphones. So USB microphones uh, are exactly that. They're pretty simple to use. Uh, you literally take a your USB cable, plug it into the bottom of the microphone. That's what I'm using right here. It's a USB microphone. It's a condenser, but USB it goes right out of that into your computer and your computer sees it. Uh, and when your computer sees it, uh, you can uh, select that microphone or that uh, as your sound source. So uh, with Audio-Technica, Audio we make a couple different models. We make the 2020 USB Plus, which is the one I have here. And that, like I said, is a side address condenser. It also gives you a headphone output on the side of it. So you can plug headphones into it if you wanted to. Um, and these are uh, these are really uh, uh, these are really good for these types of podcasts. They they work really well for that. Uh, and then we also make this AT twenty two thousand five USB. This is more like a dynamic. So uh, this is our dynamic version of a USB type microphone. Still works great. Yes, you have to be a little closer to it, but uh, it works really well for, and I, I know a lot of pod, podcasters that like this microphone because it is a dynamic mic sometimes has that, that bassier sound. Um, they make some packages too, like podcasting packages where you get the headphones and stands, stuff like that. Um, and here's another package with using the dynamic microphone. This also would be good for podcasts. And now, uh, any questions on USB microphones before I get into my last section? Uh, James, there wasn't a question on USB microphones, but uh, there was a question on um, price differences between uh, dynamic and condenser mics. Good question. The simple answer is usually <laughs> condenser microphones will be more money than a dynamic, but it's actually not it's not a true statement. So with Audio Technica and other manufacturers, but Audio Technica primarily, they have price points for each. So we have dynamic microphones uh, that are the same price as our condenser microphones. Um, it really depends on the quality of the microphone. So uh, I would say your lowest price mic you will find uh, at West, I would bet, would be uh, definitely a dynamic microphone. But when you look at the best sellers, the mics that sell the best, you'll find that they're very similar in price, whether it's a condenser or a dynamic. When you get into your studio type equipment, that's really where condensers take off. So they, condensers can get extremely expensive. In fact, um, you know, you get an, a lot of the vintage microphones out there too can get really expensive. But Audio Technica, with the beauty of them, is they have figured out how to provide a high quality product at a price that's very affordable, and they're able to take that technology and put it throughout their entire line. Um, and if you ever, you know, if you ever watched the Olympics and a lot of the, a lot of the stuff out there, Grammy Awards. Uh, it's Audio Technica microphones, but a lot of the technology, especially in the microphones like we use for the Olympics, a lot of that technology filters down into other products that we make. So, anyway, that's a long-winded uh, explanation of dynamic to condenser. But no, it's good. Uh, we have a, we have another one too. Um, I assume this is for USB microphones, but uh, any ones that are specifically better for Mac versus PC or anything like that, or nope. They work perfectly either way. The, the, the way things are 
today, I mean, you, most of the stuff you don't, you don't even have to download drivers or anything anymore. You can literally just plug and play these days. Um, and with like, with zoom, like I'm, I'm on a zoom call with you, I'm going through different microphones. I, I've got, all I've got is my, my little MacBook pro uh, computer here and a couple ports of it, uh, USB ports plugged in. It's, it's very simple and they work, uh, equally with, uh, PCs, you know, PC or Macs. Cool. Any other questions? Okay. So can't talk about microphones without talking about condensers and dynamics, but you can't also talk, you have to talk about wireless. So let's talk about a little bit about wireless mics. Um, once again, we've already talked about condensers and dynamics. In the wireless world, those are both provided too. Those are also available. So um, with wireless, there's a number of different types of wireless. There's numbers, different quality levels of wireless. Why would one person want one wireless over another? Well, obviously price comes first, right? Because someone, you know, if someone's trying to hit a budget. But if you're wanting to expand that and get into the uh, the higher end mics, what what uh, what separates all of them? So as we look here, uh, the System 9 VHF is with uh, Audio Technica, our lowest priced uh, uh, wireless type mic. It's a dynamic, okay? Um, dynamic mic uh, that has a, a little receiver that has two antennas and uh, works in the VHF uh, frequency range. So remember the old TV sets? Uh, you know, channel, well, in St. Louis, I'm in St. Louis. So channel two, channel four, channel five, KSDK, all those, those were in, uh, in VHF uh, broadcast back in the day. So it's a really robust uh, frequency range. Um, it can transmit uh, quite a bit of distance. Uh, it, uh, in, in, the, in the case of this microphone, it gives you four different channels. So if you do get interference from uh, ra uh, the radios or, uh, you know, TV or whatever, you have four different channels you can select uh, to either get away from that or if you want it to combine and have four systems in the same room. Next level up, we do our 2000 series. The 2000 series is also, uh, is now UHF, so it's even a higher frequency level, gives you 10 channels. Uh, the Two, these two systems uh, both use uh, a dynamic microphone once again. And then when we and then we have our higher end system, our UHF 3000 series. This is kind of our uh, it's the more, most popular. Um, and with the UH with these, uh, you'll find that these have uh, you know you can recharge them. There's charging bays, things like that. So uh, they have a battery indicator. So on the front layout, you can see how much battery strength you have left on your wireless. Um, you have a lot more channels to select from. You can select up to eighty different channels on something like this. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why they're more expensive as you as you go up is the feature sets, how many channels you can do. Other things, though, um, can also play into that. The way a, a, a wireless, a analog wireless microphone works is the sound goes in through the capsule or the dynamic capsule or the co uh, condenser capsule, and it is there then compressed. So almost like a piece of paper. So let me get a piece of paper. Well, let's say we take a piece of paper, okay? And this piece of paper is nice and clean. Right, and I'm going to try to throw this across a room. Okay, I'm going to have a really hard time throwing it because it's always going to touch the ground. Right, because it's flat. Now, if I take that and I crumble it up, and now I throw it, it does a whole lot better. Right, but the problem is, is when it gets to the other side, it has to uncompress it. So it has to take that wad of paper and uncompress it. You still see the sound, right? You still see the sound. But these little crinkles have changed, have altered it a little bit. So that process is what we call companding. 
So the better the quality of the wireless, the better the compander is, the better the sound quality is because it does a better job at uncompressing that sound that we just compressed. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay. So the better the- that One more time, that last bit, one more time, please. Okay. So we have our, as that sound gets compressed and crinkled up, it gets thrown to the other side, it opens it up, right? And when it opens it up, you still hear that sound, but these little crinkles that are in the paper now have altered it a little bit. So uh, the better the compander, which is the process of the, the, the gizmo inside it that does it, um, the better the quality of that, the better the quality of the sound is going to be. So your higher end wireless, have a better sounding compander on it. Cool. So uh, with that, um, with uh, we have things called uh, distribution amps for wireless. Now, why would you want a distribution amp? Well, let's say you have twenty wireless in a you have twenty wireless in your theater. So you have twenty microphones that are wireless. Instead of having to have antennas for every single wireless in that rack, you can get a distro, which will take all those wirelesses and take them down and put them into one antenna. So by doing that, you can get that antenna up in the air and you can get them uh, so, so it picks up a much longer distance, but also it's uh, more stable. Because you don't, it, it doesn't, uh, it's not sitting behind a wall. You generally want line of sight uh, for your wireless signals to get the best quality and the, with the least dropouts. So by, by being able to take your wireless and combine them all into one set of antennas, you'll get a much more consistent layout for larger rooms. Now, a small room does fine without it. I mean, you can pick up a pretty long distance without an antenna distribution. But if you're going to be combining a bunch, it makes a lot of sense. So next we get into digital wireless. Now, what we just talked about was analog wireless. Now we're going to talk about digital. So digital wireless work a little different. So remember, we just talked about a thing called companding, where you're compressing the sound, right? And you're sending it and you're uncompressing it. Well, with a digital wireless, it doesn't require that because what it does is instead it takes the sound from the microphone and makes it a digital signal, almost like a, um, like a CD is made. So when, you know, compact disc, we would take analog sound and convert it to ones and zeros. That's what we're doing with our mics. We're converting your sound to ones and zeros. So what does that do for you? Well, the first thing it does is since we're creating a digital signal out of it, we're not losing any quality or very little quality because we're not having to compress it at all because it's all sending is one and zeros, like little packets of information. So it works really well. Uh, I know a lot of guitar players that like it because they, they swear they can hear the difference between an analog wireless and a digital wireless. And I know bass players the same way. I don't get the same bottom end as I get with a digital wireless. Well, that's because you're not compressing that sound. So um, with Audio Technica, we make a number of digital wireless. Now, where they, where, where uh, the difference lies, though, why are UHF still so popular? Well, because they're a much more robust uh, signal. So. A wireless, uh, a digital wireless doesn't tend to pick up as long of a distance, doesn't go as long as a distance as a analog wireless, mainly because of the waves. So analog waves are much wider, so they, they're more robust, where a digital uh, in like a 2.4 gigahertz like we use for our cell phones, it's a very small wave. So it's not quite as robust. So but they sound extremely good. So they do have a real big place in in the world of wireless. So with Audio Technica, we make uh, some nicer higher end ones like this one you see here that has two wireless built into the same rack. So we get two channels in one rack um, and also has uh, that the antennas disconnect. 
So you can actually plug the antenna in and move it further into a room. Because remember, I was telling you that the distance isn't quite as good as a UHF wireless. So, you know, taking the actual antennas and bringing them into the room more might make sense if you're trying to extend the range of one of these. Then we have our, uh, our system 10. This is probably our most popular. It's a digital system. It's really nice for people who just need one or two mics in a room that don't want to have to uh, find a channel that's open that's not going to get interference because it actually, it, it op when you turn it on, it actually scans the room and the environment and finds the open channel to uh, broadcast in. So it doesn't require you to say, okay, you need to be on channel five. Um, and then we also make a camera version. Believe it or not, we, we sell a lot of camera uh, equipment, you know, whether it's uh, shotgun mics for doing videos, uh, but also a camera digital wireless that sits right on top of a camera. It's rechargeable. So it's pretty cool. Okay, that is the PowerPoint. So exciting, wasn't it? That was fantastic, James. Uh, I mean, I, I learned a ton here. Uh, you know, I deal with our educational reps all the time. So, you know, knowing these things is definitely uh, is, is good for me, too. So we do have one question there. I, we didn't talk much about um, headset mics. Uh, but any yes, things? we can talk about that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so headset mics, once again, they're available in wireless versions. That's probably the most common one that I sell, um, but also wired. And they just wrap around your head like that. Uh, most of them, they, they're, they're, there are some that are dynamic. I would say the majority of the ones that I've seen are condenser, but there are some dynamic ones. The dynamic ones are really good for, um, for uh, like drummers who are singers because they're playing drums, right? And it's getting real loud around them, right? And remember, to be in a dynamic mic, you can't go as far away from it and pick up sound. So it needs to be right on you. So it picks up less of the drums around them than a condenser would. So if you had that, does that make sense to everyone? So if you had a condenser on the front of your mic, <laughs> you'd be picking up all your drums, but a dynamic better idea. Um, but then there's also, uh, you know, as far as condenser uh, head warns, there's some that are larger. There's some that are really, really thin. You can barely see. Um, we sell some that make are made for like theaters that are really short, like this big. Um, and uh, yeah, so a lot of different types and models and they make them, like I said, in both uh, uh, for wireless as well as wired versions of it. Yeah, great. Um, I think we touched on this a little bit, but uh, Nola was, was asking how uh, channels work. And you, you kind of touched out how, how you know, throwing the sound and everything, how that, uh, the signal, how all that works, but. Um, like channels for the wireless, is that what we're? I'm, I'm assuming, and now you can jump in there too and uh, kind of clarify for James. Just, just channels in general. Okay. I, I don't know, I don't understand them. I don't Got know what's going on. Okay, so channels. So, uh, let's see, how do I explain this? Um, so channels are waves, okay? Um, it's radio broadcast. So you have, in like a radio, you have all these different channels on the dial, right? And each one of these channels live in a little bitty space, right? And each one of them can be picked up. So if you select the right channel on your radio, you're picking up that wave, that, that sound, that signal, okay? Um, same thing goes with wireless microphones. You have all these different little areas that you can live in a signal and you can pick up all those different areas now it changes for where you live because there's other things that also are in those same places so um for instance uh cell phones um last i guess it was a year ago year and a half ago 600 megahertz which is a frequency band um was taken away from us microphone people made us sad but and given and was sold off to uh mobile carriers for mobile phones a lot more people with mobile phones and have wireless mics so sometimes this happens so they took that whole <laughs> spectrum away and 
we had to find other places to be. So you have things that come in and out. TV stations, when that happened, that happened to be in that 600 megahertz range, also had to repopulate back where we are. So now we have to navigate them. So every area, every place in, you know, in the world is going to have different channels that are used and utilized by TVs, radio, CB radio, all these different types of uh, frequencies come in. So having channels on your wireless, the more channels you have at your fingertips gives you the more ability to have more channels at one time. So if you have, let's say, one of our 2000 series wireless, we give you 10 channel options, okay? So hopefully, and chances are, you're going to find an open channel having 10 channels open to you. Someone is not going to be on all 10 of these channels, unless, of course, you're in a situation where you're, uh, you've got quite a few wireless around the building. Well, maybe one of those wireless might penetrate some of your channels. Does that make sense? Depending on how many channels you have and what's in the environment will tell you how many channels you can actually get at one time. So if let's say we go into an environment and you, let's say you're in a school, okay, and you have a number of classrooms right next door to each other and everyone's using wireless mics and they're all using the same 2000 series wireless mics. Well, that's really cool. We like that, but you can only have so many rooms next to each other before people are going to stop, start losing sound, right? So the more channels you can give them, the more channels you can have simultaneously. Does that make sense? Now, in the world of our digital wireless that we were just, I was just talking about in the System 10, they actually scan the room. So when, as soon as you turn them on, it looks for, actually with the System 10, it looks for four open channels. And it takes the four different channels and takes one channel and puts it on one antenna, the second channel on the second antenna, and then the other two channels it puts in its back pocket. Now you're talking into that microphone, right? And everything's great. And you're singing your favorite song. And as you're singing that favorite song, uh, someone turns their cell phone on and gets on the internet and they're in the 2.4 gigahertz range, which is where most of our internet is, right? Well, that channel just got taken by this person's cell phone. So you can either stop the song and yell at them and say, stop, turn your phone off. You're taking my channel. Or the wireless can say, hey, something's changed, we better move. So what happens is you have the two different channels on the, the antennas and this one is having a problem. This one drops off, this one's still holding you. So you're still hearing you. And now this one pulls another channel out of its back pocket, pops it in there, sends a signal to the wireless mic that you just happen to be talking into to say, change the second channel to this. And it does that without you ever hearing. So it can navigate. So as things change in the environment, it can navigate. Where UHF, it's generally, um, once you find a channel that's not being used, you're pretty safe if once you set it to that channel. Digital is different because that environment is always changing. Does that make sense to everyone? Any questions? Yeah, that's very interesting. I didn't know that, that's very interesting, very good. Yeah, does, does anybody else have any questions for, for James while we have him here? Uh, it's been fantastic today, um, learning about microphones. Uh, you know, it's always, a, it's always a challenge, especially in uh, today's world, as you were mentioned, like uh, teachers are trying to figure out how to you know, teach their classes wearing a mask and, you know, not being tired at the end of the day. And yeah. like, we've been trying to put microphones in schools and everything. It's been, it's been a challenge with the whole channel aspect of things, right? Because you got to get creative, right? You know, some people have a, maybe a wired mic and the next person in the next room has a wireless mic and things like that to try to get, uh, you know, to not have to deal with uh, some of those uh, channel issues. But um, yeah, very good. Well, uh, if we, if we don't have any other questions and um, you know, we're good to go, I really appreciate you, you stopping in James and giving us the explanation and um, we'll release everybody. It was, uh, it was great. I'll get the video out to all. And uh, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to us here, West Music, and um, we can get uh, any questions over to James or anything like that. And if James, you want to put your contact information into the chat, that's fine too. Um, but uh, yeah.
Appreciate it, everybody. Thank you all. Have a good one.